companies, I think, have to have some kind of a vision and a picture of where the world is going and have to map where these sustainability challenges intersect with their own activities. They have to understand both the vulnerabilities that's, that issues like climate change may create, but also the opportunities. So I think having a strategy or a vision around sustainability is step one. <clears throat> step two, and I think a lot of companies in the past, particularly those pursuing this in the periphery as a corporate social responsibility agenda, have failed to appreciate that a vision is not enough. A sustainability report is not enough. You actually need real agenda items that you execute on that bring sustainability into the core of strategy. And that, I think, is what separates the kind of new picture going forward from the old view of sustainability. And I think the real challenge for companies is to become systematic in how they look for opportunities to make sustainability an element of their competitive advantage. The uh, approach to driving this, again, laid out for those who are interested in this Harvard Business Re Review piece called the Sustainability Imperative, um, I argue, comes in four waves or stages. The first thing is to do the same old stuff, but to do it in new ways, to be more attentive to those eco-efficiency opportunities, the ways to reduce risk or cut cost. And there are many, many companies who have now uh, done this. Some of the examples are very famous and are ongoing over decades. 3M has saved billions of dollars through its Pollution Prevention Pays Initiative, now a couple of decades on. Uh, and it really has allowed the company a framework for looking at what it does and how it does it and engaging employees in helping to reduce waste, cut scrap, improve efficiency, lower energy consumption. <clears throat> the second element or second stage, I think, of really moving to sustainability leadership and being poised for an eco premium uh, in the marketplace is to do new things, to launch new approaches that help to shift the way the business operates in a very fundamental way. And you know, there are many examples, again, of companies starting to do things quite differently and using sustainability to help smooth or even energize a transition process. Um, I think of how DuPont, starting a couple of decades ago, launched a commitment to zero waste. Um, you know, that was at the time seen as insane. How could a company not have waste? But it's allowed DuPont to really rethink a number of businesses to drive efficiencies, resource productivity in particular, cut scrap and waste, and in doing so, improve bottom line results. So that really was a, a way of bringing sustainability into strategy uh, to allow the company to do some things it hadn't done before. A third stage, I think, of the push towards an eco-premium opportunity is to transform the core business around sustainability. And in this regard, there are a smaller number of companies, but a growing number, who I think are transforming with sustainability as a critical pivot point for the transformation process. Uh, Dow is a good example of a company that, under CEO Andrew Liveris, is really becoming a very new company a chemicals company becoming, I would argue, a sustainability solutions company in many regards. Uh, not simply a chemicals company, but a company that is thinking about how it improves the quality of its customers' products with sustainability goals in mind. <clears throat> and just in the last few months, you know, Dow has had a number of announcements on this front. Uh, just a few weeks ago, uh, Unilever's Lifebuoy Soap, its signature product, a 150-year-old soap product, has been reformulated with a Dow new chemical in mind that makes the soap work better, uh, improve the uh, quality of disinfection that the soap provides, and from a sustainability point of view, could improve public health the world over, because this is the world's most common soap in the developing world. Uh, so big initiative from a Dow point of view, uh, helping one of its core customers, Unilever, to take a product to the next level. Uh, likewise, uh, Dow has got a water purification system in the marketplace that's a big hit now and is, again, uh, delivering real results in the developing world. And some of the uh, elements of Dow's uh, product reframing around sustainability 
are highly engineered innovations within developed country markets. The coatings on wind turbines, for example, to make them slip through the air more smoothly uh, represent uh, application of traditional Dow strength in material science to a new area of opportunity, a power generation from the wind. And then finally, I think there is in the fourth stage, uh, a small number of companies that are really completely remaking their business with sustainability as one of the motivators of change and transformation. Uh, in this regard, I would point to, for example, Alcoa. Uh, the Aluminum Company of America is the original source of that acronym that under Klaus Kleinfeld, uh, dynamic CEO, has become much more than an aluminum company. It's really dramatically shifted its focus from what might have been the upstream view of a value chain that begins at a bauxite mine, um, much more towards the downstream, higher value added opportunities of being a solutions provider to the ultimate end user of aluminum. Uh, for example, helping Boeing to dramatically remake what an airplane looks like. Uh, lightweighting those planes, uh, making the pl a plane much more aluminum based and other advanced materials. Even helping Boeing to replace the riveting that was how planes were put together for all of history. Uh, now they are fusing parts together, gluing parts together. This push toward a new, more business-minded approach to sustainability that is not playing defense but is on offense um, really has one more in critical component, and that is for sustainability leaders to be recognized in terms of their market value. Uh, the sustainability leadership, I think, has not fully been translated into stock market valuations. And that, I think, is because we have the wrong metrics of sustainability in place. I think that the uh, past history of sustainability as a topic for measurement has largely focused on the niche investment market of what I would call values investors, people who wanted to project onto their investment portfolios a sense of uh, unhappiness with tobacco, or weapons, uh, guns, or gambling, or alcohol. There are a whole set of things, including the environment, where people wanted to steer clear of what they perceived to be bad actors. So I argue that a lot of the existing metrics data, when it comes to environment, or social factors, or governance factors, is framed around delivering information that is useful to a values investor, but is not of much interest or use to the mainstream investors who are interested not so much in values, but in value. Is sustainability translating into competitive advantage in the marketplace? Growth in sales, better productivity, higher profits, lower cost, any of the things that deliver value and would make a company worth more in the marketplace. So I think there is uh, a growing push, and by the way, it's spurred not only by sustainability uh, and not only by this possibility of demonstrating value, but by a growing number of investors, including universities and pension funds, concerned about the carbon exposure of their portfolios. The whole divestment movement that's emerged on campuses are looking for a quite different set of metrics than the old ESG, so-called ESG metrics, that have been out there in the past. Now, this shift in terms of getting metrics that are value-oriented requires, I think, a very different approach. Um, I've argued again in a recent MIT Sloan Management Review piece with my colleague David Lubin that we need a value driver model of sustainability metrics. So really, a sharper set of focused metrics, uh, not trying to cover all of the things that a, that a uh, GRI, a uh, a, a traditional environment or sustainability metrics approach might cover. Uh, that global reporting initiative now has hundreds of things it's asking companies for too much uh, it, it, to be meaningful, too much to really help sharpen the focus on where value is being added by a sustainability strategy. So Lubin and I are arguing for a tighter focus, a narrower set of metrics, and really bringing to bear an investor, mainstream investor perspective that requires a sifting of metrics with a sharper focus on what is material. So a new emphasis on materiality in metrics. And the goal really being 
to bring into mainstream business uh, and mainstream investor community the idea of sustainability as a critical factor that defines and shapes increasingly uh, as we move into the 21st century the prospects for success in the marketplace. So I, I think the bottom line here is that we are at the cusp of a real change in how sustainability plays in strategy. Uh, it's been recognized by a number of businesses as important, but a lot of them have not yet seen that translate into value and into marketplace appreciation for what they're doing, particularly investor appreciation. And I think the investor community is coming to see that this can be an added element, if sharply focused, in screening which companies are going to do best out over the short, middle, and long term.